Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I don't know if you can hear the smile in my voice, but I've already been having a delightful conversation with Bradley Hamner. Let me tell you a little bit about Bradley. He's been an entrepreneur since 2009 and began his first business with the belief that his sales abilities would be enough to grow and scale. Quickly learned that being the rainmaker wasn't enough. After a health scare, he began architecting his business, and he puts that in quotes in his bio, so I'm, always, I'm very interested to talk about that and architecting his business to work for him. Now, he teaches other business owners to do exactly the same. Bradley, I have already been delighted to have you. I am excited to record the podcast, and I'm excited to probably invite you on again and again. <laughs> We've only been talking for a little while, but I'm just completely happy to have a conversation with you today. So thank you for being here. Thank you for the invitation. I've enjoyed getting to chat with you for a few minutes. I'm honored to be on here, and hopefully I can serve your audience. I'm pretty confident you can. Let's let's go back to your your superhero beginnings, your superhero origin story. How did you how did you first decide to become, realize that you were a coach? Maybe someone advised you or told you about coaching or you found the word at a time when you already realized that's what you were doing. So how did you figure out you were or decide to become a coach and how did that realization roll into the business that you have today? Yeah, you had shared with me that, you know, different people have had different starts and, and mine was kind of unique. I obviously was a business owner, started my first business in uh, 2009 and was a business owner and had ran and operated that business as CEO for several years. And along the way, I just enjoyed, loved the conversations with other business owners. We would talk, they would call me, Hey, what are you guys doing to, to be able to hit these sales targets and you're growing your business and what are you doing? And I just loved the, the, the discussions that we had. And so one day a friend of mine who I talked to, you know, almost every day called me and said, Hey, I'm going to go speak to this other business owner. He's kind of struggling and wants some help. And uh, he said, what do you think I should talk to him about? I said, well, what do you think about like you and I going over there together and maybe we could like, you know, charge for it. And he was like, yeah, that sounds great. And so we, <laughs> we throw together this pitch deck on a, on a PowerPoint. We went over and, and talked to him and, and really it wasn't coaching in that in hindsight, it was, it was really running his business. It was almost like we, he outsourced us to, to run his business. So it was completely not a scalable model. He basically <laughs> paid us $5,000 a month to say, I'm going to Florida. You guys come in and run the business. Well, we love that. And then th within a week we went and, and got our second client. And for whatever reason, we charged that client $4,000 a month. And before you know it, for the next uh, few months, we were in business but it was not a scalable model. That being said, though, that was my first taste into, man, I really do love this. I love this so much. You know, my partner, obviously, he enjoyed the the extra side income that, that was coming from it. We began to kind of have differences in terms of, you know, philosophical, how do we're, how were we going to coach certain things in the business? And so I ended up taking on some private clients within a few months of that, but that's how my uh, journey into coaching got started. I, I did not have somebody that was, you know, pouring into me or did not, I had invested in coaching myself, by the way, I, I, I really do believe don't trust a coach who doesn't have a coach. Mm -hmm. I think if you're going to embody a learning and you're going to want your clients to be coachable, you have to show that yourself to be coachable. And I'll go as far as to say, I have never asked someone to write me a check for more than what I have written a check for in my own coaching. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that's just my personal belief mm -hmm. is that if I'm going to ask somebody to pay $24,000 to work with me or whatever that may be, then I want to have known that I have paid that much. And if I haven't done it, then I'm not going to ask somebody else to do it because I, I just want to be honoring to that process. So anyway, that's how I got started. Yeah, I, I actually really like that. I know it's, it's, a, it's a, a strong personal choice. I love how that represents empathy and action. It's just like knowing what it feels like to put that number down and sign your name to it. Like knowing mm -hmm. what that feels like in your gut, yep. <laughs> what that feels like in your head and in your heart. There's just something about that where it's like you you can say, 100% look them in the eye and say, I know exactly how you feel right now because I've been in this position before. I know how it no felt. Question. I know how worth it it was. And there's just being able to get that from a coach 
And that's, mm-hmm. I mean, it's exactly the kind of thing that a coach really traffics in is that kind of not just like the kind of empathy you can learn about from a book. It's just that kind of connection, that kind of accountability, that kind of guidance, totally. that kind of, you know, I've been where you are. I know where you are. Let's go where you want to go together. I also know how to get there. Let's, let's, let's get to work. It's so simultaneously comforting and challenging like in exactly the way that you really need from someone who's going to fill the role of a coach in your life. And I just, I love the way that you represent that in your practice. That's, I think that's powerful. Well, you know, I have learned something from every one of the coaches or coaching programs I've been a part of. Some of them I look back on and say, oh, that probably wasn't the program I needed at the time, but I don't, I don't look back on that as saying, well, that was, you know, not money well spent. Some of the, some of the programs I've gotten so much more out of, than from some others, you know, at the time of this recording, we're almost in December of 2022 and looking forward in 2023, I've already laid out, well, what is my personal development, my personal development plan? What programs am I, am I going to invest in? So I am more, we, you and I talked about intentionality before we hit record. And mm-hmm. I think about my being intentional around my own personal development. So I'm more I, I I don't make as many impulse decisions as I used to in business. And I certainly do th- don't do that in my own coaching programs to be able to say, what do I feel like I need and what does my coaching business need now? And who do I think is the best person or the best program that's going to help me to get from where I am today, point A, to where I want to be, point B. And so I, I'm more intentional about that. So I have four or five different programs I'm thinking about right now that are going to help me fill in some gaps and kind of move me along. The reason I say that is because it helps me to be very clear as to where my programs fit in with somebody else too. And again, I think that there's an authenticity that I hope to try to transfer over to my leads, prospects, and clients around, yeah, I'm going to invest in my own coaching. And here's where I think we can be able to help serve you as well. Yeah, it's really... I, I, you said this earlier on, and I, I, I immediately like I responded to this because it's a, one of those things I hear from from pretty much every coach I talk to. But it's like every good coach has a coach. Every 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 coach who's worth your time and worth your money is imminently coachable, mm-hmm. and that coachability never goes away. And that's something that I've found to be very much in common with both people who have come to a point where they understand that they that coaching can have a powerful impact on their life, and people who have decided that coaching is a way for them to impact other people's lives. Is there's yeah. this not just an understanding of, but a commitment to learning and growing and remaining yep. teachable and open and seeking out those teachable moments, those teachable abilities for yourself and for other people. It's really, it's something that I find it's, it's when, when you, once you see it, you, you see it everywhere. You see it everywhere. It's present because one of those things where it's like, it's, it, it checks a box where it's like, aha, you, you have, you seem to have it all, all put together. You have an mm-hmm. excellent coaching practice. You know exactly what you're talking about. You never seem to put a foot out of step. You have always have the right words to say. And I can tell that you're learning right now as we're talking. And this is me as like a coachee being coached. It's like, I can, I can see your openness. It's so present and you're so available. And that mm-hmm. combination, I mean, it just, I mean, not to, not to blow too much smoke up the coaching industry's butt here, but it's just, it, it's a combination that can't be beat. It really is just, it's such a breath of fresh air when you're thinking about trying to grow as a person. It kind of actually kind of reminds me of, and I'm talking more than you in this interview now, but it reminds me of a concept I keep, I keep stumbling upon as I'm talking with coaches about this sort of gap in education where we spend so much of our lives, our early lives, engaged in really formalized structured education in one form or another. And then we get to a certain point in our lives and then that's kind of it where it's Mm. just like, there's not really many places to go when you realize I need to learn this thing or I need to, there's some skills I need to acquire. And we're not just talking about like learning calculus or, you know, proper grammar. We're talking about how to code. We're talking about how to, how to move through the world, how to interact, how to connect and be empathetic, how to be a better leader in various environments for yourself, for your team, for your company, as an entrepreneur or as someone who is still in a corporate environment and still expected to be a, a kind of a dynamic leader, there's so many different things we could still learn as people that there isn't really much of a structure for, at least not when compared to our early lives, which is all very well structured and planned out, at least from an education standpoint for a lot of people. And mm-hmm. I love the way that coaching really comes in and fills that gap where it's like, it's really, it's tailored to the individual, but it's also filling a gap of sort of like a general, here's how to Take the steps you want to take to be more yourself, to go where you want to go, to become who you want to become, to be a better leader, to be a better business owner, entrepreneur, all those things. It's just, I find that to be a very, 
a very valuable service that really coaching is the best place to get it from. Yeah. I, 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 as you were talking, I was wondering like in my own background, where did I, where did it come from that I just had it in me that I wanted to always learn and grow. Hmm. And I do think that some of it is just hardwired into who you are. And then I think along the way, there's the experiences and for, you know, my, my, my clients and my program, people that, that get to know me, I mean, they, they realize, you know, family is a big part of my life, my kids, I'm super active in my kid's life. And, and so is sports. I mean, I I am a sports nut. I'm a sports junkie. I use (laughs) sports analogies a lot. I played sports. I'm a competitive son of a gun. I, I, I play, love to, I played golf in college. I played basketball. And so, you know, a lot of my clients are former athletes that own businesses now, not that that's Mm. some prerequisite by no means, but I think you end up attracting who you are, not necessarily exactly who you want to attract per se. Right. Mm. So I just was off the, got off the phone with one of my clients, you know, he played division one football. He was a great basketball athlete. He just started one of his window and door company. And, you know, like he's one of my, my <clears throat> newer clients, but I think that there's, when I was growing up playing basketball, I just did love the coaching to get better, right? I wanted mm-hmm. to get better. I wanted to be a better three point shooter. I wanted to improve my free throws I, and in golf. Like I wanted to be a better putter. And so I just loved the idea of learning from others and pouring into me and then me seeing the results. And I think that my point in saying all of that is to say, I think that that began me to realize very early on in my own entrepreneurial career that I needed to make sure that I was investing in coaching programs myself. And now I really just share with people. I just share with people, this is what's helped me this is my own journey. I hope this serves you, you know, like that's really it. I just, yes, I've codified it into principles and frameworks and concepts and all those kind of things. I mean, yes, we have all of that, Oh yeah. but really all of it is like, this is what served me in my business. I hope it serves you. And it, it, when you speak from a place of I've been there, done that, there are things that I go and my clients know it's like, that's don't talk to Bradley about that. Like, that's not the thing that <laughs> That well, it's just not a part of our program, you know, and I will yeah. point them in the right direction of other coaches that that I have in my tree, so to speak, or people contacts I know. One of my podcast sponsors, for goodness sakes, is a is a coach because of what he coaches is is not what I coach. It's it's not I'm not interested in it at all. <laughs> and yet he's one of my podcast sponsors. And so, you know, and he and I talk about the differences in our in in, in our program. So anyway, yep. That's oh, lovely. It's, it's something I've I've also identified in talking with all these coaches. It's just it's and it delights me to no end how how much there's a rising tide raises all boats kind of feel to it, and yeah. how how important fit is to every coach, and they understand. Yeah. And, and every coach, because there's such a collegiality, such a like a like a desire to serve that unites all, all like pretty much every coach I ever talked to, every coach in the business. So if there's if there's not a good fit. They they don't just want you to find somebody else that's a good fit for you. They probably know somebody who's a good mm-hmm. fit for you. It's like they'll mm-hmm. have recommendations for you, which is why I always, yeah. whenever anybody asks me, I'm just, just find a coach you think you'll like and give them a shot. Like just <laughs> connect with them, talk with them, have a conversation because if they're not the right one, they are uniquely positioned to know who might be for you because they know so yeah. many other coaches. And, and right. I love how near universal that commitment is, that expression mm-hmm. of, of just I'm, I'm I don't like to throw the f word around too lightly, but a, a very f- familial kind of connection where it's just like you know, it's m- maybe not be me, but it might be my cousin over here <laughs> who knows yeah. exactly what you need or has worked in exactly the field you're looking to to grow and develop into. So let me connect you two, and you let me know if that works out for you. And it's just I just I just love it. It feels so connected to a yeah. like I said to like a rising tide that really is raising all our boats. <laughs> yeah. Well, it it does come down to, I'll, I'll use fit. I really, mm-hmm. uh, I would say it needs to be fit. I had one of my clients that I invited to be a part of my inner circle and which I only have eight people. Mm-hmm. And he asked me, he said, I would, I would love to, why do you think I would be a good fit? And I thought, that's a great question. And mm-hmm. so I ended up answering that question as to why I think he would be a great fit for that. And he, of course he ended up joining my inner circle, but, and, and, and I, and I had to go through saying, 
what does fit actually mean? And, and for the coaches listening, you may have different programs. You may have two or three different programs. And so the fit for one program may not be exactly the right fit for another program, not just on for because of you, but where that person is in their journey. Okay. So like my core offer that I have is called blueprint. And so one of the clients, I was like, you know what? I, so we just onboarded two clients within the last week or so. One client was absolutely a fit for blueprint. 100%. It was like, it is a, it is the perfect fit exactly where he is in his career, exactly what he's wanting to do, what he's looking for. It's a perfect fit. He felt it. We felt it as a team. And he's obviously come on as a new client. Another client was like, you know what? He's in startup phase. Like mm. th that is not the right place for him. If he wants to get this off the ground, he needs to go to this other program that I, that I have. And I had an opening in it. And I think that's the right place for him. And then he gets the blueprint program, but it wasn't going to give him the thrust that he needed to get the business off the ground. So that's an example of, you know, fit comes in different, in different ways, not just personality of the coaches and the, and the client, but also within the program and where that person is in there. Again, I, I serve business owners. And so, you know, where the, where they are in their business. That's yeah. I, that, that's a really, really important point to emphasize. I feel like too, that, that fit is a dynamic multifaceted concept that every coach ought to be well acquainted with. And I like, I, that's a perfect story that exemplifies how there's personality fit and there's program fit. And there's that's like, right. where are you at in, in certain, certain stages of development, certain coaching, it's just not, it's not, not going to be right for you. It could be yeah. the perfect fit, a perfect, like wedding of coach and business owner could be, you, you completely see the value of the program, but you're just not there yet. And that's, again, that's something that a coach is perfectly positioned to, to help you to see. It's like you're being coached before you've even signed up for the coaching. <laughs> it's that's funny right. how that works. Right. Oh man. There's so, there's so much meat on this conversational bone. It's, I'm looking at the clock. It's already been almost a half an hour that we've been chatting. I am 100% going to have you back on for another conversation. I feel like we could we could branch off into a number of different directions for much longer than a half an hour. <laughs> but um, before I let you go, I want to make sure we talked a little bit about like who you are, what you do, how you got to where you are. You have a very dynamic business model. You have a lot of options for people. So I want you to speak just for a couple minutes on, it's kind of a two-parter question. Where can people just find out more about you? Just like learn more about what you do, what you offer, why you offer it. Just kind of like the basics and kind of acquaint themselves with your approach as a coach. And then also where can people best connect with you if they wanted to start a conversation, have a chemistry call, maybe like DM on a social media platform of your choosing. So yeah, where are you best able to be connected with and where can people just start finding out more about you? Yeah. One thing I do want to say, though, is actually I don't have a lot of dynamic programs. So I have two. I have two. I have oh. the inner circle and I have okay. blueprint. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, I will tell you along the journey. So my inner circle, I have eight, eight, eight private clients that I meet with one to one. And then we also meet together as a group as well. And so that is a that is a program that I've capped. And then I have Blueprint, which is my uh, coaching program, $7,500 a, a, a year for that program. And I, I have capped Blueprint as well at 100 people, okay? Now, in order for me to hit the targets that I have in the business, we will at some point add on a lower tier offer, I do not know exactly what that's going to be at some point. It will, I have launched courses in the past, so I've done digital courses. It will probably be some sort of a combination of digital courses and some other type of deliverables at a lower tier if people are not ready to jump into Blueprint. Mm -hmm. uh, because again, I don't even really offer the inner circle. I don't even, I don't even like, you know, market that at all because it's only eight people in there. So it's really just pulling people out, you know, that I've worked with and I don't really have spots available for that. So Blueprint is my core offer. And then everything we do is to get a, the right people into Blueprint. So I just wanted to share that. That's my model yeah. and we'll build. So we kind of work from the, if you want to use a value ladder terminology, we've worked backwards. We've started high ticket and then I've worked down the value ladder itself. And so where can people find me? So the best place to find me is actually not on social media. The best place to find me, yes, I'm on social media. Yes, I'm on Facebook. Yes, I'm on LinkedIn. You can, you know, connect with me on LinkedIn. The best place, Voxer. 
V-O-X-E-R. If you're not on really? Voxer, that is the best place to get in touch with me. I love Voxer for news, for its asynchronous communication. Yeah. I mean, I you and I were talking about notifications, but that's how I communicate with all of our clients on Voxer. It is the best communication tool whatsoever. If you come into our program, we immediately, very first thing is get you into is get you into Voxer because it's a it's a way for us to be for me to be able to communicate with a lot of clients asynchronously. So connect with me on there. You can download that free app and then connect with me, Bradley Hamner. Just search that and then send me a Voxer. I'd love to stay in touch with all the other coaches that are out there. Otherwise, I, I have a podcast myself. It's called the Club Capital Leadership Podcast. We've had it for next month, be three years, and we do interviews on Mondays. And then I do some solo episodes, eight to 12 minute episodes on Friday. So I encourage people to to go and check that out. And hopefully that some of those episodes serve you. I've been able to have some pretty cool guests on there over the years. Mike McCallowitz, general four-star general Stanley McChrystal has been on the podcast mm-hmm. and yeah, it's been pretty awesome. I got next week, actually, the vice president of high performance at Chick-fil-A is, is coming on or he came on and his episode drops next week. And so I'd l- encourage people to check out the the podcast. And then if you're another coach, again, connect with me on Voxer is the best way to do it. And I, I wish I had equity in that company. I have recommended that <laughs> app so, to so many people. I was like, I, I would, I would absolutely <laughs> invest in that, in that, in that company if I could. I'll get some kind of affiliate link set up for you. That's oh so man, funny. I wish, I wish. I wish, but it's a, it's free app. And I think the pro version is like 50 bucks for the year or something crazy, but it's such a great tool to use. I love it. All my friends, family, you could take away every tool I have, every app on my phone. If I just had Voxer, I'd be good. That's so funny. On two levels, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm chuckling mightily because I'm responding very, very, very much to both of these because we, I've been using Voxer for a few years now and we have it. It's, we I have it set up for a few of our clients because like you said, is that the asynchronous comms, especially the ability to do like text or voice memos, like it's one of those things where it's like, I'll just have ongoing conversations where it's just like, I'm able yep. to complete a thought and like keep a, keep a conversation really active and lively and really engaging, even yep. in an asynchronous way. I'm also a, a, a Voxer super fan. I've been using it for years. I love it. And also I've stumbled on a very similar schedule for this podcast, weirdly enough, where it's like for a while we were getting so many interviews that we had to go to like publishing three a week. So I just had too much, too many in the backlog. Yeah. And I got tired of saying, it's like, and your episode will be live in two months. I was like, no, 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 no. Let's, let's start, let's start cranking these out. And so we started doing three a week just to get caught up. And now we've kind of settled into a interviews on Mondays, you know, mm-hmm. special kind of like short, you know, just solo, solo, so solo episodes on Fridays. It's like, I, I'm, just responding to the fact that I've just recently kind of settled on that schedule and that you've been doing for years now. It's fantastic. Congratulations on three years, by the way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We, we, we've, we've crossed the, we've crossed the, what do they call it? Podcast fading. I didn't know that that was the thing until, Mm -hmm. until much longer. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, I get it though. I mean, you know, we produce three episodes a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and to stay ahead of that is it it is a heavy on, operational load is mm-hmm. what i call it. it it to to sync all those i mean there's five people on the team that have their hands in some part of it i mean my part is easy to just you know have a conversation <laughs> to talk to people and ask questions you know but but to actually produce the episode and do it on time and make sure it's consistent and do all the social media and the emails and all of those things It is a, it is an operational load for sure. So, you know, but you know what, in business, it's not supposed to be easy. It's not supposed to be easy. It's not easy. And anybody that tells you that's easy is trying to sell you something. (laughs) And then you probably don't need and almost certainly don't want. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So check, check out my podcast go to check out the club capital leadership podcast, connect with me on Voxer, my website for, for my programs is businessgrowthcurator.com. If people want to check that out, if they are a a business coach. Obviously, if you were a, you know, for somebody, we we drive people to the Rainmakers Dilemma.com is is where is our call to action most of the time. Business Growth Curator is my main website. We've got an assessment on there that is, you know, that's how we've codified things in our world is you need to transition from being the rainmaker to the architect of your business. And what do architects use? They use blueprints and that's why the name of my program is Blueprint. I put that one, put that one together, (laughs) man. I'm yeah, we're going to, I can just have you back on to talk about that because I've, I've, I've always been drawn to the, to the analogy of an architect when it comes to, when it comes to coaching, when it comes to building a business. So yeah, Yeah. I think I've already got our theme for, for part two, when I, when I 
when I slide into your Voxer channel and ask you to come back on in January. That'd be Bradley, great, man. Bradley, thank you so much for being on. This has been fantastic. You're fantastic. I had such a fun time. I would not. I was going to say cut. I would not be cutting this short. We've already gone longer than usual. I would not be cutting this off. I'd be stealing more of your time if I could. Yeah. <laughs> but I do promise to come back in and have some more fun conversations with you in the future. This would be fantastic. So thank you. Awesome. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you, Kevin. And hey, to the audience, you know where to find him. Drop into his Voxer channel. At the very least, check out the websites. And, you know, of course, he's present on social. So if you just want to learn more, do yourself a favor. Learn more about Bradley. He's got a lot to offer. So thanks for listening. And we'll talk to you again soon.